Firstly here, I believe you have took a while the um, handout I've been written for you. It's kind of tactical for our lecture, which is quite pivotal. Here, as you have seen the title, it is the lectures and the phenomenology of the internal consciousness of the nail biting. So what do you mean by that, by that? So from our sheer experience of biting now, our recognition of which could be re-transformed into something else, you know, something else through the phenomenological, the phenomenological investigation as to the consciousness uh, the kind of concatenation of dynamics involved within that act. If to reconstruct it and deconstruct it, you know, if it form a kind of reconstruction. Well here, but, but what, what I mentioned here is the internal consciousness. I'm not discussing about the uh, astral elements, you know, like it might be humiliated or something like that. Like uh, what I've been written in the introduction part. You know, the idea of sexuality, you know, generated from Freud and the like, which consider the certain elements of astral, you know, the axis. Kind of humanistic elements. You know. These elements might be neglected from our you know, from, from our inclusion. Excluded, suspended. Yeah. Because there might be too much controversial elements involved. I see this concept. So what we should really focus on is the, is the idea, is the dynamics of a nail biting process as conscious act. As a mental activity involved in the process of perception, memory, remembrance, and the like. Those mental movements are then able to uh, deconstruct the initial nail biting events and reconstruct which again phenomenologically then we can you know, you know, go further from that steps. So firstly why we consider the recognition. Yeah, well, we have to recognize the nail planting process as a conscious act. It's not just like a normal physical act. Yeah, it's like referential to what Edmond Hassel has mentioned. This conscious act is considered the process of intentionality. It's like we're being intentional toward the nail biting that act. At that moment of consciousness, at that moment of the physical nail biting. So it becomes very different you know, from our natural concern of nail biting. Because therefore, the, the phenomenology can, could be applied. The front foundation of the recognition of which as a conscious act. So, so after we have recognized the, the conscious, the sense of that event, we, we, we could 
down and fire at our enemies about from our knowledge. Today, what, what is important is about the end of time. In another word, the temporality will become the character of the consciousness, you know, the character of even all consciousness. You exemplify by right? the now biting consciousness. Here you So we then start to reflect on the consciousness of the nail bite. You know, it starts to remember that process. It's always like it become re repetitive daily. But we're still trying to remember that, remember the process. Else, like to you know, to and that considers the analyzation basically. So for example, we might buy now every day. And like for me, it's like a kind of daily project. Look, it's in a certain accomplishment. It's daily, as this daily project, the kind of overlasting character could be recognized as well. So as I'm, I will be back in now today. I was, I will be remembering. And likewise, remembering the process of all now biting consciousness in the past. In a kind of retentional wound. It is also the words from high school. From also from Edelman High School. Retentional, what should we call? What should we address on this word, retentional? It is our memory, remembrance as to the conscious act, which you know has supposedly has passed, has become reminiscent, has been removed from the idea of the givenness of the present, of the now part. So therefore, it can it will come from. It will confront, confronts the fact of modification. It will be modified because it is givenness of past. It's no longer present at hand. But I'm, as I'm saying that, it's also controversial because I cannot say it's not present at hand. So that's force of temporality. Which form a kind of totality of the past and present. And the past and present. As a totality. As a totality involved. All the consciousness, all the conscious acts involved as to your entity could be formed as a whole. Being as a whole. There's also the idea of Martin Hay, who is mentioned, who has mentioned the fact of dozing as an entity, and told this that you know, has been thrown. The fact of future pres present and having been become a whole. So in that case, all the intentional acts involved. Also, the remembrance, consciousness, the conscious fact of now biting happened in the past to now part, to the now, are all are totalized as an essential structure for moving forward. In this case, it's kind of vertical. Totality. What I mean by vertical totality, totality is that that being cannot, the being of the now fighting event cannot deny you know, that being of its own past, 
as a part of its entity as a whole. For example, like we are, we might be. I cannot deny kind of reminiscent ego that I had. And that, I mean, the unconscious Sophia. I cannot deny that today because it's also part of my being. That's in part of my entity, you know, as, which has been totalized by the force of temporality as a central character involved. So the after. So the after. As we have confirmed the vertical perspective of temporal totality. You know, from the reference of Heidegger and Edmond Hessel. We could then Consider what I'm talking here about simultaneity. So, as to the vertical timeline, what I've addressed, what I have addressed here is, is the element of extension. So it, it, it extends from the initial conscious act, conscious point, toward Uh, to something else. In an extent, it's not singular. It cannot be singled out with its purity and voice. Ex extended with multiple potentiality of the being. The being of that conscious act. Which, you know, which might be inauthentic. Which might be quite narrow. You know, from our perspective. But in fact, has been extended. But what I want to point out is, you know, we, we should recognize that extension, you know, as, as the central phenomenon, which we have been neglected, you know, we, we have ne neglected you know, in the past, you know, to some extent, without phenom phenomenological concern. But here I'm talking about simultaneity. What did, what did I mean by simultaneity? We usually, from our common sense, we define simultaneity as, um, as the juxtaposition of things, of events, of conscious acts, maybe, in this case. In this case. Of you know, the conscious act of different objects. Somehow justice with a kind of sheer temporal position there. So, as I would be back here, I could assure that it's not, it, it is not the only intentional act taking place at that moment. I could say like, oh yeah, I will be reading book, I will be doing some surgical research as this event is taking place. So in that case, there are multiple Conscious acts and events parallel at that moment, at a temporal moment or present. Why is that happening? Because it's natural, you know, it's, because you cannot just buy an L, like buy yourself. <laughs> Or might have something else involved in, you know, which might trigger out having some causal you know, relation 
as to initial impediment. But today I'm not talking about kind of causality okay, of the neural biting event as a psychic perversion or things like that. I'm talking about the, the extension of the initial neural biting act. So therefore, because of this kind of simultaneity, because of this simultaneity of different intentional acts, we have to recognize at that moment of neural biting. It forms a kind of another method of extension. Extended horizontally. Horizontally from the initial nail biting events. From the initial nail biting event. But it contains problems here. You might consider that simultaneity as a possible concern, but is that indeed possible? Like that temporal position could be shared by two intentional acts? Is that possible? Is it in fact not possible? In reference to Edmund Hesworth's idea again. Here I have to quote Hesworth here. Now what he is mentioning is the essential originality of different temporal positions involved. So even though like even though it, it might happen at the same time, as you suppose it should be. But uh, because, because of the arrangement of the different temporal positions involved in, in, in to each, then the recognition of each event could be formed. Otherwise, you cannot recognize it as a two intention act you know, with the kind of composite of perception kind of composite of perception, memory, remembrance and other conscious acts merged all together at that same temporal moment. It's not possible because at, at that moment all, all these perceptual elements have been concurred. So without the originality of the temper, temporal positions of each of them, we would never be able to recognize the difference, you know, of the just the, the we would never be able to recognize the just the in fact of the just position of different consciousness at that moment. We might just take it as a single being, singular consciousness to the singular object or something. So that's the fact. That's the phenomenon that I have to take from it. So in this case, the originality of the temporal position of each intentional act, of each conscious act, has been affirmed. So as to each neural biting process taking day, you know, today and tomorrow, and maybe yesterday, it's in the different temporal position you know, between the one that happened yesterday and what happened today. It becomes different. So as you re remember that, though it's kind of similar event, though it seems identical about what has happened and what has what, what is going to happen today. It becomes different as to its temporal position, then it can distinguish them. You know, as different acts. But that's through a kind of vertical perspective as to time. Which I has which as to what I have mentioned. A different you know the the force of temporality has indeed 
Indeed. Indeed, they are totalized. It is the device for perspectives. So, so then. So then, what I'm talking about here is the horizontal perspective. So, so in the end, this problem here, I don't know why you have recognized. You know, as what I, I mentioned about the recognition of different temporal position from Hasbro. Uh, here I have to take a kind of counter argument from Harry Brooks. In time and free will, therefore, Harry Brooks has pointed out a dualist critique, a dualistic mode of our analyzation. It's quite dialectical. Because what has what works in view is kind of difference in kind as the true difference. Differential from the phrase of difference in degree. So he believed that the difference in kind could only be recognized through the temporal flow. So the example from him is a sugar block. Like in a kind of same spatial relation with other, there's no essential difference. You know. But as it's a kind of, but through the duration of which it might melt, it might, um, you know, it might go through this other physical process or something the like. Therefore, the sense of which is through this enduring change can be penetrated in. So the, therefore, what he believes is. What he believes is the what he believes is only the vertical perspective of temporality, which form the difference in kind as a true difference, differential to the you know to the horizontal perspective, but in his case not as to the temporality but as to space, the spatiality. As difference in kind. The spatiality of which, you know, the homogeneous, the homogeneous time at that moment only takes things mathematically as difference in degree. But in fact, that's kind of a deviation for me. It's kind of deviation about the, the fact of simultaneity. Which, from my recognition, about it is also formed through the temporal force of and the temporal force because of the originality character of each temporal position constructed at a, even that supposed to be the same moment, but there cannot be kind of true simultaneity at all. You know, the kind of pure simultaneity. At that present, two things has been multiple things have been injected. It's not possible because your recognition or consciousness might not be able to take it, take one pure present point as to that conscious act. Because all conscious act is an enduring act. So it's temporal project. You know, involve the but the perspective of time, uh, from past, present, and future, that vertical perspective, from here to here, it forms these things. It, it forms that thing. So it's always enduring. It's always the force of duration. It's not just force of 
uh, force of the so-called uh, horizontal one. The vertical one is always involved. So that kind of cross structure of time is always there, even at that supposed moment of 1780. It's always there. We cannot neglect it as such. We cannot, yeah. Yeah, so therefore, I would rather recognize what Albert has called a special difference in degree. As misleading, you know, told uh, an idea of the further horizontal force of temporality for totalitarian move. A totalitarian move. You know, it's a, a horizontal extension of the initial temporal object, the temporal event of neo life. Therefore, the potential relations between the one conscious actor, which could be connected, could be potentially connected with other conscious acts, supposedly parallel, with different temporal positions. So it's actually relational. Time becomes relational. Both for century. Through the idea of simultaneity and also the vertical through the idea of idea of past, present and future. So then this kind of cross structure. Yeah. As signified in key act of the, the totalitarian act of temperate. So as you can see at the last page of our textbook, the last page of our textbook, there's a figure here. And I have to say it's it's probably the end of our action here. I believe quite a lot of things are worth about to be reflected today. But you should really take a revision. And for next week, we might have got our second lectures as to the further perspective of the nail biting consciousness. And the back. So yeah, I'm really appreciating your listening here. I believe it's indeed helpful.